Welcome to EMTB videos. I always thought the weight of EMTBs would drop, but for 2020 it seems they're actually getting heavier. Now a lot of them come with bigger 600 to 700 watt hours integrated batteries. This comes with a weight penalty. But they're not all heavy. The new 2020 specialized Levo SL Comp Carbon, the cheapest Levo SL with a carbon frame, is 18.5 kilos without pedals. So how do they make a bike that is about 3 kilos lighter than the old Levo Comp Carbon? And as much as 5 to 6 kilos lighter than some competitors? They sacrifice power and range. The new Levo SL has got a much smaller and lighter motor, weighing in at about 2 kilos. It's almost a kilo less than the more powerful motors from Specialized, Shimano, Giant, Bosch, etc. The motor is called Specialized SL 1.1, and it's made by Mahle. It's rated at 35 Nm, less than half of what the bigger motors offer. The maximum power consumption will be much less for a smaller motor, so Specialized fitted a 320 Watt hours battery, saving even more weight. So how weak is this thing really? The transport section to the trails is just one long climb. We got on our bikes and we pedaled calmly while chatting. And I was a little bit surprised to see that we were effortlessly keeping the same pace. The other bike was a moustache game with a new and more powerful Bosch Performance CX. And once we hit the trails, the Levo SL was still performing well. There are a couple of really steep climbs and we got good help getting up. When maintaining a constant pace, the motor power is good, but if you stop mid-hill and try to get going again, you will feel the lack of power. You need to keep the cadence up to get good help from the specialized SL 1.1. So no grinding along in a too high of a gear. And you never get that surge of power when you suddenly hit the pedals hard. Check out my review of the SL 1.1 motor for more detail. So, the bike will do some seriously steep climbs. On the other bikes, Specialized run 11 speed cassettes, with 42 teeth on the biggest cog. This saves some weight, so I was a bit surprised to see Specialized running a heavy 12 speed, 11 50 teeth cassette on their super lightweight EMTB. It makes sense though. With a weaker motor, I often found myself riding the lowest gear, so I see why they chose the heavier cassette. The bike isn't really designed to be the most capable climber. A chainstay length of 437mm is about the shortest I've seen on an EMTB with 29er wheels. And I have to move well forward on the bike in the steep ups. I'm in no way holding that against the bike. When we hit flatter trails, the chainstay length seems perfect for this bike. I couldn't really find any disadvantages to having a lightweight and less powerful EMTB in this terrain. I found myself bouncing about a lot on the trails. It's much less effort throwing the bike around on the flowy trails, and I enjoyed it a whole lot. Sure, you could do the same on a heavier EMTB, but it required so little effort on the Levo SL. I didn't have to compress the bike heavily and violently move my body around to get the bike to respond. This bike inspired me to play around much more than I usually do. Of all the MTBs I've ridden, there is no doubt, the Levo SL is the closest thing to a regular trail bike. On the roughest descents, I once again recognized the feeling of a non-motorized bike. The 150mm travel Levo SL is much less stable when speed increases over rough ground. The bike will be knocked off the chosen line more easily, and it isn't as calm as most of the EMTBs are ridden. There are several reasons for this. I think the lower weight plays a role, but this bike isn't really designed and specced to be an aggressive descender. A low bottom bracket height usually aids stability in corners. The 347mm bottom bracket height on this bike isn't very low though. A long wheelbase aids stability, but the wheelbase of 1217mm is relatively short for a size large bike. Part of the reason for this is the very short chainstays. And then there's the components, most noticeably the fork. The Fox Rhythm 34 has a bit of flex, and I simply can't set it up to handle high speed rough trails in a composed and controlled manner. The front end of the bike will bounce about in the rough, 
and it doesn't help that I have to run pretty high air pressure in the narrow 2.3 inch tires to avoid puncturing. The rear end do perform better than the front. The shock is a Fox Float DPS performance that I usually like, but I have one complaint. The shock is fitted a little off center to give room for the characteristic brace on the right. This means the shock sticks out a bit on the left side, and when I set the shock to fully open, the three position lever sticks out even further. I've lost count on how many times my leg has hit the lever and nudged it from open to medium. That is really annoying. If this was my bike, I would have to find a way to make sure it remained in the open position. Rough descents isn't really a fair test for this bike. The fork is probably a good choice. It's a lightweight fork, so it helps keeping the weight down. It aids the playfulness on the less aggressive trails. The more expensive models have got more capable forks, but they're still Fox 34s. So it seems Specialized is putting weight over downhill performance. The Levo SL is the least aggressive EMTB in the lineup, but it's difficult avoiding the steep descents where I live, and it's not like the Levo SL Comp Carbon can't handle them. Pushing hard in this rocky segment was seriously scary, but I ended up setting one of my best times. Even though the battery consumption is fairly low, 320 watt hours of battery won't be enough for everyone. We did a test run with 160 watt hours extender battery. After 8 kilometers and just under 400 meters of climbing, the battery was almost out. Rider weight included gear was about 80 kilos. The battery wasn't completely empty. On the final climb, it was still on the last bar. But the motor performance had dropped significantly. This is the downside of the small batteries. They have a lower current output. On the final climb, we noticed the extender battery was getting really warm around the cable port. This should be less of an issue with the internal 320 watt hours battery. It's got twice the current capacity. I'm expecting more than twice the range from the internal battery. It should be more efficient due to lower heat loss. The total bike weight with pedals and the range extender is about 20 kilos. I was wondering if riding with the extender battery took away some of the point of this bike. Why would you spend all that money on a Levo SL and a range extender when you can get the more powerful Levo Expert with a 700 watt hours battery, fit more lightweight tires on the Levo Expert and it should only be about a kilo heavier. After riding the Levo SL, I do see the point of getting one over the Levo Expert. The extender sits just over the motor, keeping the weight in a central position. So the bike still feels really nimble and handling the bike still don't require that much effort. There are a few downsides to the Levo SL like starting in steep climbs and sacrificing some stability on the descents. The bike reminds me of how stable and composed a heavier EMTB can be. But the Levo SL was a lot of fun. I often prefer a size medium bike for my kind of riding, to keep it nimble. That's usually considered a bit small for someone at about 180cm, but this bike seems perfect in size large. The Levo SL allowed me to ride in a different way than I usually do. Attempting an endo is way less work, and much less scary on this bike. And even though the motor may not be the quickest to kick in, it doesn't really hold me back. This bike is light enough to handle even when the motor power isn't there yet. I'm doing things I usually don't even bother trying on the heavier EMTBs. I like this bike a lot, and I really hope more manufacturers decide to make sub 20 kilos bikes soon.